ज्ञानम परमम ध्येयम नॉलेज इज सुप्रीम Okay, so let us uh, begin with today's lecture. Um, in the previous lecture, we had started looking at uh, why linear algebra is important to study. And then we started looking at how does linearity arise in uh, setups. Uh, the basically, there are two uh, ways linearity can arise. One is because of uh, uh, linear equations, and the other is studying geometry in the algebraic setup. Uh, we started looking at the system of linear equations. We looked at system of linear equations in uh, two variables, and then in three variables. And in both uh, dimension two and dimension three, that is two variables and three variables, we analyzed geometrically how the solutions can be obtained. And that uh, led us to uh, algebraic method of solving those equations, namely trying to eliminate uh, variables one at a time. And trying to see whether the system has a solution or not. So we'll start with uh, looking at general system of linear equations, and uh, generalize uh, the Gauss elimination method for a system of m linear equations in n variables. So let us look at. Uh, so we recall uh, that uh, equation of the type a1 x1 plus a2 x2 and so on. A n x n equal to b1. Uh, we call it as a linear equation because uh, the variables x1, x2, x3, and x n all have powers one. And the, we say this linear equation has coefficients a1, a2, a n. In general, we may have a collection of m linear equations in n variables, and we'll write it as uh, a11 x1 plus a12 x2 and so on. So the first uh, subscript in a um, in the coefficients indicates the equation. So this is a a11, a12, and so on. That is the first equation. Second equation will have coefficients a21 and so on. And the th last equation, that is mth equation, will have coefficients uh, with uh, super uh, subscripts am1, am2, and amn. So this is a system of m uh, equations in n variables. And we called uh, a vector in R n s1, s2, s n a solution of the system if uh, it satisfies all the equations. Namely, if we replace x1 by s1, x2 by s2, and xn by sn in all the equations, then we should get the left hand side is equal to the right hand side. So, in such a vector x1, s1, s2, sn is called uh, a solution of the system. Um, and we saw that uh, the solution of the system does not change uh, if we uh, change the order of the equations. That is just renumbering the equations instead of first to be the second. The solution does not change. Multiplying an equation with a non-zero scalar and adding it to another. So we will get a new equation in place of the old one. But still the system has the same solution whichever was the solution earlier that still stays the solution. And thirdly, if you multiply an equation by a non-zero scalar, you are changing uh, only scaling uh, both sides equally. So the solution does not change. So but an important thing is here it should be non-zero scalar, multiplying by non-zero scalar. So these uh, three type of operations are operated upon the equations and they are called elementary row operations. So um, we observed that the elementary row operations when performed on a system of linear equations do not change the solution set. Of. And what is the aim? The aim is by applying these uh, uh, operations, elementary row operations, m cross n system that is m linear equations in n variables can be transformed to a uh, system of equations of the following type, where the first equation has coefficient c11, c12 and so on. In the next one, so in the next uh, equation at least one of the variables is uh, eliminated. 
if here C11 was not 0, then in the next one that coefficient is uh, eliminated and you get an equation which starts with uh, x2. Possibly x2 also can be 0, but x1 is positively missing in this. So, one variable has been eliminated. So, using those elementary row operations, the system given system can be changed, can be transformed to a system of the following type. So, we write this as there is a number r. So, r is less than or equal to the number of variables, right? n is the number of variables. So, there is a number r between 1 and n such that the first r equations possibly have non zero coefficients c1 c i s and on the right hand side possibly these are non zero but after the r plus 1 equation everything is zero equal to zero so what we have done is we have reduced the number of equations which are required to find the solution okay to r equations possibly here remaining equations n minus r equations are all 0 equal to 0. So, this is the method suggested by Gauss that do those row operations elementary row operations on the system and transform into this form. But what is the advantage of this? So, let us uh, now supposing in this last equation the remaining equations are always true, but look at this equation. Okay. In this supposing it so happens okay that one of the coefficient c r r is not equal to 0 uh, is 0 all the coefficients here are 0 but d r is not equal to 0 suppose this happens right it's possible we did not say that uh, these coefficients need not be 0 they all can be 0 but d r is not 0 that will mean what you'll get 0 equal to a non zero number and that will mean there is some inconsistency in the system so, uh, the system will not have any solution. So, that is called a inconsistent. So, if the conclusion is if for some r between 1 and n, n is the number of variables, all the coefficients c r j are equal to 0. So, that means for all j in those that equation the left hand side is 0, but the right hand side is not equal to 0, then the system is inconsistent. So, the second possibility is system is consistent that means this does not happen. So, then there are solutions. So, then n minus r variables get arbitrary values. So, let us just look at uh, the previous equation. Supposing this is a this is not this is a consistent system. So, this involves the variable x r x r plus 1 and x r um, the variable uh, x r x r plus 1 and x n. So, in this equation this is the equation involving um, these variables n minus r variables are involved in this. We can solve one of the variables in terms of the other variables using this equation. So, in this we can give uh, the remaining variables some arbitrary values and find one of vari values for one of the variables. So, that is what it says that n minus r variables get arbitrary values okay and uh, the remaining r can be determined in terms of these variables from the backward substitution. So, this uh, we are summarizing this the system is inconsistent means no solution and that happens when there is something like 0 equal to non 0 in one of those equations which have been reduced to a specific form using uh, row operations. Consistent means there are solutions at least one solution and you can get uh, actually infinite number of solutions by putting various values for uh, some variables and calculating the others in terms of them. So, this is the method suggested by Gauss uh, to solve system of linear equations. Um, to make the system more systematic, uh, we realize that uh, the coefficients uh, are important and not the variables. So, uh, a 1 1 x 1 plus so on. So, what we do is we will just look at the coefficients of these equations here it was equality equal to b 1. So, uh, we look at this array of numbers. So, it becomes important to study array of numbers that gave us a concept of what is a matrix. So, such a thing uh, is called a matrix. So, this system we saw it yesterday 
uh, in the previous lectures that this system of linear equations m equations in n variables can be written in terms of matrices. So, a 1 1, a 1 2, a 1 n if you take that as the first row, second row a 2 1, a 2 n and so on and call that matrix as a. So, a is a j k is m cross n coefficient matrix. So, the matrix consisting of the coefficients of these m equations forgetting the variables and forgetting the arithmetic symbols that is a. x is the variable which is an unknown vector. So, x 1, x 2, x n that is a variable vector you can call it x. So, this is n rows one column, this is m rows n columns. So, when you multiply you will get m cross right. So, b 1, b 2, b m. So, there is a typo here it should have been b m. Okay. So, in the matrix form you get this a x is equal to b in the matrix form of the equation. The idea writing in the matrix form is we are not really concerned with this x, we are only concerned with a and b when we transform apply elementary transformations. So, and by Gauss elimination method says that the coefficient matrix and that vector b after those elementary row operations get transformed into matrices of this type. A gets transformed into something like c 1 1, c 1 2 and so on and there are some bottom rows which are equal to 0. Right. That is a form after applying uh, uh, elementary row operations and of course, the vector b will get changed to something else. So, that is the vector b tilde. So, the transformed matrix A which was original is transformed to A tilde which is of this form and the vector b gets transformed to b tilde because whatever operation you are doing on the left hand side you have to do it on the right hand side also. right? So, when A changes B automatically is going to change according to those operations. Right? So, this is the new coefficient matrix for the new system which is equivalent to the earlier one and this has a special form look at at the bottom there are some rows which are all equal to 0 and the number of possibly non-zero coefficients right? the place where they occur is increasing. So, we'll try, this is a special form of a uh, matrix, we will spend some time on this form of the matrix because this is going to be important for all future uh, calculations. So, in to keep track of A and the vector B together, we form a new matrix A is m cross n, B is um, m cross uh, right, B is the coefficient, uh, uh, B is on the right hand side B 1, B 2, B m. So, again there is a typo here it should have been b m right because there are m equations right. So, uh, the row operations whatever we do on A are also going to be done on B. So, this is the matrix on which we are going to operate and the idea is do the elementary row operations and change it to that form. This part of the matrix should be changed to the special form. So, this matrix is called the augmented matrix because we have added one more, uh, we have added one more column to A. So, this is called augmented matrix of the system of linear equations and Gauss elimination method is summarized as reducing this matrix to a special form by elementary row operations. So, the, what is that special form? We will discuss that. Here is the special form it is called the row equivalent form of a matrix. So, for any matrix M which is M cross N non-zero of course, if it is a 0 matrix there is nothing to do with it, there will not given anything. So, we assume that there is at least one non-zero entry in the matrix. So, M is a M cross N non-zero matrix. We say this matrix is in row equivalent form R E F is short for row equivalent form if there is a number r between 1 and the minimum of m and n. What is m? m is the number of rows, n is the number of columns. So, there is a number r which is between 1 and the minimum of the 2. Okay. And there are integers which are p 1, p 2 and p r, right? uh, natural numbers p 1, p 2, p r. Here is the number r. Right? So, this is between minimum and there are 
natural numbers 1 p 1 p 2 p r with the following properties right. So, we are going to describe the matrix in terms of this r and p 1 p 2 and p r. The first property says the matrix looks like the first r rows possibly are non zero r 1 r 2 r r the first r rows are possibly non zero. So, this is the number r which is appearing here remaining are all 0 rows bottom is just 0 ok. So, that is the property of this characteristic property of this number r ok. So, what is the next one? Now, we had those now we want to describe those these are non 0 rows right. So, I am going to describe these non 0 rows now. So, pick up any one of them. So, call it r i, i is between 1 and r this is a non 0 row. How does it look like? It looks like 0 0 0 0 the first non 0 entry should be a i p i. So, that p i which was there right that was minimum between 1 and so, it is less than the number of columns that means, in the i th p i th column the first non 0 entry appears. This is the i th column this is the p i th column i th row this is the i th row going at the p i th column the first non zero entry appears. We do not bother about what are the remaining entries only we bother that the first non zero entry in the non zero row it should come at the p i th place p i th column and these numbers they should be in this order p 1 should be strictly less than p 2 right p 2 should be strictly less than p 3 that means what this means in the first r rows the non zero entries they cannot go back kind of thing if it is in some row it is coming at a, at a place in the next rows it has to be on the right side of it column right the previous ones are all zero. So, the first non zero entry comes at p ith column. So, in p 1 somewhere comes. So, p 2 non zero entry should not come on the left side of that column it should be only on the column numbered on the right hand side of it. So, that is the property of this p 1 p 2 p r. Okay. So, this is what the matrix will look like may be the first row first entry is 0 does not matter. So, there are there is a number r here is the number r. So, that the bottom rows are all 0. So, what are the non 0 rows left this top r rows are non 0. So, it has a non 0 entry each each of these rows has a non 0 entry somewhere we are only describing which place it has non zero entry for for the first one it comes at the p 1 th column this is p 1 column for the second one it should not come on the left side column it should go somewhere on the right side so it comes at a place called numbered as p 2 so the column for the second row is p 2 where the first non zero entry in that row occurs that should be on the right side of p 1 and so on so, in the r th 1 it comes at a place we do not know what are these entries remaining we are not bothered about them also. The only condition we want is there should be a number r ok m cross n matrix. So, that the bottom rows are all 0 and the top r rows have got at least one non zero entry somewhere right. Now, we want to describe where it has it. So, we will start looking at the first one first one comes at the in the column p 1 for the second row the non zero entry should come at a column p 2 which is bigger than p 1. We are not saying it should be the next one no we are not saying that even that if it comes in p 1 p 2 should be on the right side. So, p 2 should be the column p 2 should be bigger than p 1 it could be here somewhere also possibly right it can go beyond, but positively it should be on the right side of the column for the first one each next row the non zero entry should come on the on the right side right the column in which it appears should be number column number should be bigger than the previous one. So, it should look like some kind of a staircase kind of a thing and then bottom are all are 0 right. So, this is called the row equivalent form of a matrix and the Gauss said if you apply elementary row operations every matrix he did not say exactly in the matrix form, 
it was doing it for linear equations 2 and 3 variables and so on. He said you can bring it to that form, right. So, later on it was uh, uh, made more rigorous. For a matrix of course, non-zero m cross n there is a number r. Why this has to be between minimum of m and n? Because r rows are non-zero, right. So, r has to be less than the number of rows, r has to be less than m but the non-zero entry is going to come in a column. So, r also has to be less than or equal to number of columns, right. Is it clear? That is why this condition is put r should be between 1, it should be between the first column and the minimum of m and n. If it is a 3 cross 2 matrix, right, this number r cannot be more than 2, that means it cannot be 3, it has to be 1 or 2 only, right. The first so, R tells us how many rows are non-zero, bottom rows are 0, right. And each row which is non-zero is described, sorry, uh, it is described by the numbers P i. For the ith row which is non-zero, look at the column where the non-zero entry is coming. So, look at the place where the non-zero entry, first non-zero entry, is the first non-zero entry is coming. So, that place is P i then we should have p 1 less than p 2 less than p r. Of course, it has to be less than or equal to n the number of columns. So, that is the row equivalent form and that is what it says. The matrix will look like this. Now, note we are not saying there is only one row equivalent form of a matrix, right. For example, if I multiply this whole thing by some scalar, still the non-zero will remain non-zero. So, that also will be in row equivalent form, right. So, when we change a matrix to a row, row equivalent form, we are not saying there is only one possible answer, right. The numbers could be different, but the pattern has to be same, right. In two row equivalent forms, R has to be unique and P 1, P 2, P R have to be unique, right. Entries are not important in the row equivalent form. Right. Is it clear? We will do more examples to understand that.